morning. Bonjour. I'm here to see Renault. Marcelo is my name. Renault, Marcelo. How are you doing? My pleasure. Yes, I'm doing well. You smell amazing too. Well, uh, it's something secret. Oh, I thank you so much for uh, yeah. your time and whatever happens, happens. You know? I love the moment and uh, sometimes it's good and sometimes Definitely. it teaches us stuff, you know. I've seen the things that you've been doing since you've arrived at Amwaj, and you have a real sense of discovery, adventure, and travel. I think that's right. Probably comes from my personality, my passions, but also from the fact that I had to move to Amman uh, four years ago. I was living in New York, and then I, I went on this um, adventure, like completely changing my life. And, and obviously, that becomes a big source of um, inspiration for, for me. When you came to Amouaj, the first collection that was released was Renaissance. I'm very much about words. Words mean a lot. And the fact that you call this Renaissance and then all these core ingredients that celebrate Oman. Yeah. And one of them is frankincense. It started with the fact that, you know, I arrived in Oman, I land at the airport and you smell frankincense everywhere. But then progressively you realize that actually there is not only one quality of frankincense, there are many qualities. And when I say qualities, usually I mean different origins and then different extraction methods as well. And in the end, today at Amouage, we are working probably with, if I'm not wrong, 12 to 14 different qualities of right. frankincense. Wow. All from Oman. Not all from ah, Oman, okay. and that's a, a good point. So why? You know, some people tell me, why do you use only frankincense from Oman? The answer is no. And the reason why is because I want the, the perfumers to have access to the broadest palette of ingredients possible. Right. Amouage is a big pride for Oman, one of their biggest national pride when mm -hmm. it comes to private company. Today, the best quality of frankincense probably comes from Oman. However, if you look at the um, the global usage of frankincense, only a very, very tiny portion of the, the frankincense comes actually from Oman. Right. The business of frankincense is very local. It's really like, okay, you know someone who has access to a good quality of frankincense. So, and that's how you establish those connections and so on. But if you are an international buyer or someone based abroad and so on, who wants to access the best quality of frankincense in Oman, it's extremely difficult. Right. And you might actually not get what you want. Historically, resins were like money, you know, yes. people actually were paying with resins. And it's still very um, much the case today. So you might actually buy frankincense in Oman and that frankincense might come from Somalia. So that highlights, I believe, the, the necessity to, um, to really try, you know, to, 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 to build and to create this beautiful, um, sustainable, um, production of frankincense. The best quality of frankincense comes from a UNESCO site in Oman. Right, okay. um, that UNESCO site is called Wadidoka. This is historically the birthplace of the frankincense tray. Um, so it has been classified as a UNESCO site. It does not mean that we cannot harvest frankincense there, but it means that you can do it respecting a lot of criteria. You cannot build any random factory to extract actually frankincense oil. It needs to be done in a way that is sustainable. Um, and it just felt right actually to say, well, AMWA should be involved with, with UNESCO. AMWA should be involved in developing something that contributes to the local economy. But at the same time, that makes um, frankincense a, a perfumery product that the industry can finally talk about. Because there is a reason why the industry today is not talking that much about frankincense, because people don't have visibility about what is happening. You know? I can see your fingerprint. I love that you are connected to all this. The things that you are doing, the celebration of Oman, yeah. visually, artistically, and the fragrance, and then its core ingredients, I think it's beautiful. Thank you. In perfumery, substance and style 
are not mutually exclusive. So everything that has to do with craft, know-how, being serious and rigorous about the art of perfumery, yes. and style, meaning, um, meaning image, meaning sensitivity, meaning creating something contemporary appealing and so on, um, they, they are not mutually exclusive. And, and usually, one comes at the expense of the other. Perfumery can be an exercise of style. Yes. Just like, okay, it's all about the style, the way things look and so on the and prestige all of that. And the If you scratch the surface, you realize that it's lacking a bit of substance. Right. Or it's about the substance, but then aesthetically, um, maybe it's missing. And either you're credible or you're appealing in a yes, way, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and I think that, um, I mean, there is a way actually to create something that is rigorous and serious. I think I go deep in the craft of perfumery and the industry of perfumery, trying to rebuild this chain of ingredients. But at the same time, I think I, I also push a lot the aesthetics and, 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 and some of the needed modernity that, that is required today in the, in the fragrance world. You have married these two together. Because I was in a masterclass with you, you talked about the rigorous nature of the maceration process and the cost associated to making sure that, that those ingredients are properly macerated. And that's money. That's money that is sitting there that could be doing something else. I do remember you said it very passionately that it was important for the brand, important for Amouage to remain at that level. I'm given the chance. Being the, the creative director means a huge responsibility when it comes to the perfume industry in general. If I were to do things that are not pushing mm. the boundaries of perfumery, who is going to do it? Yeah. It's, it's the responsibility of Amouage, mm. like to really um, keep the, the dream alive in mm. perfumery. Mm. Mm. What happens if all of a sudden those important perfume companies start to simplify things they do? Mm. Um, and start actually um, creating things that are expected. Mm, mm. I, I, you know, I... That breaks my heart, just to, to, to see this to happen. Right? Just, like, yeah. imagine today if all of a sudden everything becomes so like standard and, 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 and is losing a little bit of this magic, then who is going to fall in love with perfumery? And I mean, is it going to become very functional as a... You have a, a difficult role. Amouage is one of those cornerstones keystone brands within the niche perfumery world yeah. and you could go into that place where you become very functional and no more creative adventurous you know what i mean that almost like you think to yourself that's yeah. only allowed for the the young indie startup you've remained that cornerstone but at the same time you're still going into directions that is exciting for a perfume lover yeah. and exciting for the market and i'm going to say it keeps your competitors on their toes as to what is our watch going to do next mm. that summarizes well the tension that you know when i create something i would love as many people as possible naturally i would love as many people as possible to know about it yes and to love what i'm doing of course which means if you take a shortcut doing something very expected and commercial and uh, you know like very polished and so on because the gut feeling would be it's going to appeal to a broad audience however this is not what people are expecting from amouage yes people are expecting amouage as a proper creative house to create and to propose things that are that are quite daring and innovative in a way so this is where i'm where I'm trying actually to find the right balance. You know, having more people know about Amouage and, and discover Amouage, but also remaining very unique and different on the, on the market. You're doing an awesome job. So from me, little me, I, mean, I fell in love with Amouage years ago, and I, I think I have fallen deeper in love with the work that you're doing. So okay. I feel that perfume is life. I always say this. It brings sunshine. It's like you're watching a movie in black and white. The moment you bring perfume into your mm. life, color begins to emerge. And in the movie Amelie, at the very end, she smells him four times. First, she smells her, his jumper, then his neck, and then his hair. Okay. Okay. So what perfume, no pressure, what perfume is he wearing? What amouage is he wearing? And what amouage is she wearing? What sillage is she creating as they go past? I think what he might be wearing, I would say, meander. I gave this answer because you evoke this notion of hugging and being really like close to someone. When you talk about Amelie, mm. I think 
I think she's wearing epic woman. In the in the movie poster, she's against this deep green background. Yes. She has that that mystery in, yes. in, in her. Like for me, she is really like that fragile rose that grows in the middle of this complex construction of epic woman that is on the one hand very spicy and on the the other hand ambery. Spicy ambery, and then the the rose growing in the middle. So she is that rose. I love it. That's it. What an honor, what a pleasure, what joy, what everything, because Renault is exceptionally busy and this is for me, this is an oasis. This is an oasis in the desert that I've come to and, and you've allowed me to, to sit and talk and, and share together and I just, this is, thank you. Thank you, Marcello. It was a pleasure. Yeah, for me, all of it. <laughs>